What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Character Profiles. This week we're doing Trey from Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal. So in the English version he's known as Trey. In the Japanese it translates to basically the Roman numerals for three, but I think they call him three in the Japanese version, I don't know. He's 15 years old and his anime debut was in Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal episode 26, let the duels begin. And here is his duel score, there's his wins, his draws and his losses which accumulate in this many points. Nice. Trey was born Michael Arclight. He is a character from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal and has a gentle and quite kind personality. Like his brothers, he swears revenge on Dr. Faker, though he cares a lot more about the family's welfare, eventually putting his faith to save them in his friend Yuma Tsukumo. Trey's name means the third or third child in Middle English. The numbers he has used, number 32 Shark Drake, number 33 Common Anomaly Maku Mech and number 6 common anomaly Atlantis could be seen as puns due to his name. So Trey has short pink hair which curls slightly at his neck and has emerald green eyes. Like his brothers, Trey wears formal medieval style clothes. However, in contrast to his brothers Quattro and Quinton who wear white and dark clothing, Trey prefers brighter colours such as red and white. Trey has a pale orange dual gazer tattoo similar to the ones his brothers Kite Tenjo, Dextra and Nistro use. Like his brothers, Trey has a crest on his body as well. His is a green insignia on the left hand which resembles a flower. Trey is friendly and has a gentle demeanour, unlike his brothers who are more cold and a bit more brutal in nature. Trey loves his family a lot and doesn't want them to fight, attempting to stop disputes between Quattro and Quinton. Vetrick stated that Trey always completed his missions, which are usually the most important. Quinton also trusts Trey more than he does Quattro, but this is quite obvious due to Quattro's recklessness and hastiness. Although Trey is normally kind and slow tempered, he can get serious if it is about duels, because he still wants to duel Shark even after Vetrick Vetrix told him to feel free to lose after he hands Shark number 32, Shark Drake. His caring personality is also reflected through his duels. Within his tag duel with Quattro, he uses cards to not only protect himself, but Quattro as well. And Trey has a very strong interest in ancient history, as Trey was able to recognise all of Kazuma Tsukumo's ancient artefacts in which he showed true, pure amazement for. When Trey eventually gains a portion of Vetrix's power, his personality hardens and bears a a colder, more serious demeanour in his desire to meet his family's expectations. He destroyed many of his own beloved monsters, including his favourite card, just to reduce the attack points of Yuma's monsters. Eventually he broke Yuma's spirit and captured Astral using his crest and the powers that Vetrix gave him, as well as gaining a Roman styled armour. He became cruel and sadistic just like his older brothers, even attacking a helpless Yuma and proceeded to laugh evilly when Yuma was hurt. He would even go as far as to attempt to kill Yuma as he got angry when Yuma didn't fall to his death from the road and he even refused Yuma forfeiting and just skipped Yuma's turn so he could defeat Yuma immediately with his powers. At the end of his duel with Yuma though, Trey reverts back to his loyal and caring personality, having developed a true friendship with Yuma and passes his hopes for his family to him. In the past, Michael Arclight lived with his brothers and their father, Byron Arclight. They lived a happy life with their dog. One winter night, their father gave Michael a dual monster card, Chromanomaly Aztec Mask Golem, which Michael showed to Thomas. His father became involved in Dr. Faker's experiments, but Faker eventually betrayed both him and Kazuma Tsukumo, sending them to another dimension as sacrifices to open a door. As Byron didn't return from the trip, Michael and Thomas were sent to an orphanage while Chris remained at Dr. Faker's facility in an attempt to learn of their father's fate. After learning about what really happened to his father, Chris left Heartland with his brothers. Their father eventually returned, but his form was warped into that of a child. He took the name Vetrix and began plotting revenge, with Michael and his brothers aiding him. Michael became known from then as Trey. Vetrix imbued each of his sons with the crest that was directly connected to their souls, which granted them great power. 
So Trey plays a common anomaly deck, which focuses on swarming the field with monster cards to quickly exceed summon his monsters with a variety of ranks. He also uses a range of cards which increase the attack of his monsters, such as common anomaly pyramid eye tablet and common anomaly ley line power. Trey mainly focuses on exceed summoning number 33 common anomaly maku mech, which he then uses in combination with cards such as common anomaly cabrera trebuchet to inflict large amounts of damage to the opponent. In addition, his deck includes number supports such as number wall, number lifter, and number six common anomaly Atlantis. Also, he later gains access to number C6 common anomaly Atlantis. And with that, guys, that's another episode of your character profiles done. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Let me, don't forget to leave a like, favorite, and subscribe. And tell me who you'd like to see next week in another episode. Thanks for watching, and catch you later.